In this video, we're going to discuss what it means to file your FAFSA form as an independent student. So there are a series of questions on the FAFSA that are going to ask you things such as, are you married? Are you a member of the armed forces? And so forth. If you answer yes to one or more of those questions on the FAFSA, then you are determined to be an independent student. And what that means is that you are only going to have to provide your own information on the FAFSA, your own income, your own assets, etc. You do not have to present your parents' information if you're an independent student. Most students are dependent, and that means they have to provide both their income and asset information and also the income and asset information of their parents. And so therefore, if you think about it, if you're providing your parent and your income, then you're going to have higher income and higher assets that are assessed for purposes of financial aid than if you only provided your personal income and assets and information, right? So in just in terms of financial aid, typically it's better just to report your own financial information. And so therefore, your EFC is going to be lower, that's your expected family contribution, and you're going to be eligible for more financial aid. So that's what it means to be an independent student, how do you qualify for being an independent student? Well, you have to answer yes to one or more of the following questions. You have to be either married or have kids. Now, it could be just one child is enough, but you have to provide at least 50% of that child's support, right? So if you only provide, you could have five kids, but you only provide 10% of their support, that's not enough to be considered independent. Now. If you have dependents, people who depend on you for more than 50% of their support that are not kids, not a spouse, let's, let's say you have a, a grandparent or someone who lives with you and they depend on you for more than 50% of their support, then you're an independent student. Also, it's going to ask you, were you born after a certain date on the FAFSA? And what it's trying to drive at, are you at least 24 years old? If you're, if you're at least 24 years old, then you're going to be determined automatically to be independent. If you're in grad school, if you're doing a master's or in professional school, like, like law school or medical school, then you're automatically determined to be an independent student. If you are an emancipated minor, so when, when you're a child, if you were emancipated in a court of law, or if your legal guardian, if the person is your legal guardian is not one of your parents, in that case, you'd be an independent student. Also, if you were uh, in orphan, uh, foster care, if you were in foster care, or if you were a ward of the court, since the time that you were age 13, then you're an independent student. And also, if you are currently homeless or at risk of homelessness, in that case, you also are an independent student. However, there's going to be need to be some documentation for that. Uh, basically, you need your school liaison or the director of a homeless shelter to certify that, that yes, you are in fact homeless or, or at risk of, of homelessness. And also, and finally, if you are a military veteran or, or member of the armed forces, in that case, you're automatically to be determined to be independent. And again, being independent means that only your personal information is included on the FAFSA, not that of your parents. And so therefore, it's going to increase your chances of being able to get financial aid. So it's a good thing for you in terms of being able to get financial aid. Thus, for that reason, you cannot just declare yourself to be independent. You can't because you could see where people would try and abuse this, right? So you might have a, a wealthy family and uh, they, they say, well, the child says, look, uh, I'm independent. My parents don't really care for me. They don't, they're not going to pay for me to go to college. Can I just be an independent? They refuse to pay. And unfortunately, th that is not a valid uh, reason or that doesn't qualify you to be an independent student. If you don't qualify for the nine things that we discussed, you are not, you're not an independent student. However, that being said, if you can show that you have absolutely no contact with your parents. If you don't, if you just don't even know where your parents are, then you should contact the financial aid office at your school and explain the situation and, and see about how they want you to follow the FAFSA and how to proceed. However, in a more common situation, if you have contact with your parents, so you're in touch with them and so forth, but for whatever reason, they just refuse to provide any information for your FAFSA. They won't give you your, their tax return information, or so you can't fill out the parent section of the FAFSA. They just refuse to provide any info. Unfortunately, in that case, you're not going to be eligible 
Uh, you can't receive any uh, federal financial aid. You, you're not good. Basically, you will have no EFC. You'll have no expected family contribution. Uh, I mean, you could still fill, you basically you still fill out the FAFSA. You still fill out the FAFSA, but there's a point where it asks you about providing information of your parents, and you just say no that you're not going to do it. And so when you get you're, you're going to get no EFC, and therefore you're not going to be eligible for any aid. However. You should talk to your financial aid office because in some cases you might be eligible for unsubsidized loans.